Okay guys, so I've got a scene over here, but what happens if I actually start playing around in it? Can I actually walk on these rocks? So if I press the play button, you'll notice that my character just fell through the rocks and wasn't actually able to stand on them. Now, this is particularly the case because I have actually disabled collisions on all of these meshes. So if I select all of them, like... Uh, you know, just literally every every mesh that I've got in this scene, and I go down over to collisions, you'll notice that I've got them to set to no collision. I'm going to put that over to default, and now I'm going to press play, and you'll notice that my character is sitting on some of them, but it's clipping through others, and that's because collisions are improperly set, and if I walk around, I'm sure at some point, I'll probably fall through the floor again. So let me just see. Oh, there we go. I just fell through the floor. And that's because we got bad collisions. And these are because when I brought these meshes inside Unreal Engine, they didn't actually come with any collision at all. So there is a way for us to create collisions directly in Engine that's going to give us the desired effect. So I'm going to first bring a mesh inside Unreal Engine just so you can see the process of that as well. Uh, I know obviously people know how to bring meshes over into Unreal Engine, but this is this the purpose of this particular uh, showcase is more about what happens when you bring the mesh in in terms of collisions. Okay, so I am going to bring my content browser up and I'm going to drag this mesh in here. Now the questions over here in the you know, import, we were going to be able to build as a nanite, so that's fine. It says generate miss uh, missing collision, so automatically the engine will create collisions if it hasn't detected any. Uh, obviously, you can really control how those collisions are being created right now. It's just going to do a decent job at adding some collisions. So I'm going to press import because I'm fine with it to be dropped into the, you know, into, into the engine like that. After it's uh, importing and the building nanite, we will be able to use our mesh. And there we have it. So I'm just going to drag it, you know, into the scene. Maybe going to put it up here and just make it bigger as well. Just so we're able to see it. Okay. So this is a massive mesh now. Um, now, if I um, if I look over here into the panel, you'll notice that the collision press it is set to default as it should be. So if I press play right now, I will be able to fall on the mesh. But as you can see, the collision is actually terrible. Like I'm literally floating in the air and I'm walking on surfaces that don't exist. This is what Unreal Engine's automatic collision system does because it doesn't really know any better, unfortunately. Right, okay, so what we want to do is we're going to double click over here onto our static mesh and this will open the mesh into its own editor. Now in here, we will be able to see this convex um, decomposition but if you don't see it what you want to do is you're going to go up here where it says collisions and then just say you know in, in here you obviously got some options to add some basic shapes as collisions but you can also say auto convex uh, collision so with this we can create a brand new collision now if we go up here again and sorry if we go into the show panel over here and we choose simple collision we will be able to see what type of collision Unreal Engine has generated and this is what it looks like and this is why it's so terrible and why we were walking effectively in the air because of just how badly this box looks like okay it does have it underneath and above as well now one thing to uh, note in here is that you can also use the mesh itself as a collision, so I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But for now, let's have a look at this new panel that we opened in here by clicking the Auto Convex Collision. Now over in here, depending on the options that you select, it will generate a more complex shape to uh, wrap around this mesh. So if we press Apply button now, after a bit of time, you can see that a new collision has been created, which is definitely closer to the mesh. Now if we go back into the level and press Play, we will be able to walk on the surface. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely better than what it was. At least I'm not walking into the, into the air as much as I used to. Now, if we go back into the editor and have a look at uh, things like, you know, improving the max hole vert. So if we, let's say, increase this number, you'll notice that you will, you will just have more vertices being generated. So again, this is important if you have a lot of crevices like what we do here on this mesh. So I'm going to press apply again. Now, obviously, the more complex that the, the collisions are the worse the performance it will be uh, overall so another thing to take note is that in, uh, regardless if we increase the max hole verts if we're not giving it enough hole counts meaning these triangles then it's not going to really be able to use those verts so i'm going to crank this up to maybe like a 22 
Uh, I'm gonna then going to click apply again just to see what that looks like. Um, now you can see that these vertices are definitely, these vertices and these holes, these triangles are smaller and thus trying to follow that shape a bit better. We can also increase the hole precision to allow this to better follow the shape of the actual mesh as as much as you know we go up with these numbers and they will take longer to compute now i can press play again just to see what the effect is now so you can see now that my the feet of my character is definitely following the shape a lot better definitely a lot less issues and sometimes you kind of still get these issues over here so you know it's not perfect but it's still better than what it was now another method of doing this would be to also use the um, you know, use another system which is basically using complex uh, meshes as collision. So if you go in here and you've got a complex collision mesh, you can change the collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. And once you've done that, it's actually already, you can see it over there. You see all these small uh, vertices and, and edges in here. This is actually the complex collision generated by the mesh itself now you can override the mesh itself by dropping one in here it's automatically loading the one that it's based on it's automatically loading itself into as a complex collision and if we go over here and we now press play you'll um, see that the feet of the character are following even better the shape of this mesh again it's still not 100 percent perfect but it's the best uh, method really but unfortunately because of how unreal engine uh, you know because of because we're effectively almost duplicating we're not duplicating the mesh but we're getting close to like creating a, a a far more high fidelity mesh on top of this in order to generate collision if you have a large scene this can quickly build up and take a lot of resources uh, by the way there is a one caveat in here also to note which a lot of people don't know about so i would definitely advise you to pay attention to this is the fact that when we've used the it's the mesh itself as a complex collision we have effectively used a nanite mesh so let me show you what i mean so if we go back in here and we have a look this might crash the system so i'm going to pause the video and start again because it might crash the video it might crash the engine sorry when i do this but we'll see so what i'm about to do first just to just to ensure that it doesn't crash the engine i'm going to change this back to what it was the project default so we're now not using the mesh as a as a complex collision that's step one now we're going to go in here and we're going to actually duplicate this mesh okay and we're going to name this cluster 01 collision okay then we're going to right click it go to nanite and disable it okay now if we you know we're in the editor of the of the mesh itself we're going to select the collision mesh and we're going to drop it in here okay just like that and now we're going to switch from you know project default to use complex collision as simple and this is effectively going to load a higher fidelity mesh than what we had before now in here you know if you do something like use simple collision as complex or things like that that's not going to work you basically need to use use complex collision as simple now just ensure that you know if you double click the collision mesh just ensure that there is definitely no nanite turned on okay and i've tested this before and especially for very high resolution meshes this is very important if you actually want to be able to get a proper collision um so you know for something maybe like a planet size or something like that definitely you need to do this one i've just done here using a nanite mesh will definitely decrease the poly count the faces that you're working on when generating a collision from that type of mesh okay so this is what we're getting okay now obviously this is a quite an ugly mesh let's just go back to these in here so i do have them opened i'm just going to put them into here like that and i'm going to generate a new collisions for them i'm just using some you know quite random numbers to be honest i'm not really looking at it right now i'm just trying to quickly iterate and get some better collisions than what they had um and i think this is going to be decent enough and now if i go up here and press play you can see that i'm just fine you know walking on these meshes it's okay this is really basic but it's very important and a lot of people who generate and bring in their meshes inside the engine they don't really know about this sort of stuff right and this is what this is a problematic sort of uh, situation because 
because they don't know uh, about it, they, they just generate, they have very bad collisions generated and they struggle, right? We'll still get some issues here and there. You see, I'm, I'm going in into this one here. I probably need to check the mesh itself. So over probably this one or this one, I'm not really sure. These need uh, collisions regenerated for them because clearly they're not good enough. So I might, might have to like redo them anyway. Um, I see it's this one in here. So we probably need to decrease the hole count because the more... Uh, segments you have the higher the chance it is to actually fall through the floor so you know try to keep a good balance here you will have to play around with these settings until you get the right one um and as i said if if everything fails do try to use a complex collision as large oh i think what's going on here yep i have no collision enabled on this one this was the problem so i'm going to switch this back to default you can see in here i have both of these not using collisions and that's why we were getting this issue and i believe yep there we go as well we have this one and that's about it so now we should have particularly good collisions as we walk around also when you do increase the let's say the scale of these meshes maybe on the z-axis like that the collision will change itself as well which is quite nice so it's not just a rudimentary system that only works on the original scale of the mesh it does actually scale up with the mesh itself which is really really cool so yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial i hope it was very instructional uh, please leave a like comment and subscribe if you did please follow me on patreon if you want to support the platform further and all my projects are available on patreon if you guys want to take a look uh yeah and i'll see you guys in the next one keep creating